This is a modern theremin. This one works on tubes. Most modern theremins work on integrated circuits or transistors. It makes sound by proximity to a radio antenna and uh, aerial over here. We'll turn this up. So there we get our sound and our dynamic is here. And that's how it works. We have the theremin sounding 880 hertz by using a wood block connected to a microphone stand to give us proximity to the radio antenna aerial. It is connected to the saxophone through a speaker box. I'll finger the lower register and the upper register. This is the inner workings of a 1929 design theremin. It was built after the specs of the RCA model that was mass produced at that time period. You can see that it has 10 tubes in the back. In order for this to work uh, as a theremin, we would have to attach it to the coils and those would be attached to the aerial antennas like we saw on the other theremin. This one is not connected because it has been modified, as was Santee's, to bypass the aerials so that we could have control over pitch, volume, and there's a bias control in the back as well. So we have volume and we can get it, we can get it pretty loud. We can get louder than that. And that sound is just coming through the speaker connected to the saxophone, a little two-inch speaker. And we can change our pitch here. Santi describes his experiment as using a theremin that was modified to bypass the aerials. It used a control panel to ensure that the pitch was stable and then the sound was sent to a small speaker that was attached to a saxophone. As we said, we have a theremin that is built according to the specifications of the theremins at Santi Runyon's time period uh, when he said he did this experiment, 1928-1929. The saxophone that we used is a 1914 Busher True Tone. Uh, Santi played a busher at about the time of this experiment. He also played con, uh, but this is, this is definitely close to what he would have used. This is a speaker of the same design that was invented in the 1920s and is actually still made today. It's a magnetic coil speaker, it's dynamic, and it uses a paper cone, which is the type that they used in the 1920s. It is attached to this speaker box, like so, and uh, wired to a phone jack. Santi mentions that the professor asked him if he had a mouthpiece that he didn't care much about. So he took the mouthpiece and he cut the shank off. Well, that's what this is. It's the part that goes over the cork. The shank of the mouthpiece was attached to the speaker box. That. All right, we have this tuned to 880 hertz. Turn up the volume. It's attached to our saxophone. And we will play the lower octave. And the upper octave. Santi also mentioned that if he sounded a pitch lower than 880 hertz, it would play the lower octave of the saxophone. So we'll play a lower pitch. Right. 
Santi mentioned that if you played a pitch higher than 880 hertz, that it would play the upper octave. 